Yeah, my name's Wayne, I'm 48 and I'm from Liverpool. Well, my, my depression itself actually started around the age of 12 or 13, but I kept it hidden. I didn't really speak to anyone about it. I suppose I didn't see it as any sort of mental illness, really. I was afraid of what people would think and I was afraid that relationships would change and I didn't want my parents worrying about me all the time. The first time I, I attempted to take my life, I would have been around age 17. Um, I was just feeling really low and I just thought, I don't want to live anymore. So I took 50 anodin and for a day I was doing nothing but being sick and every time I ate or I drank something, it would just come straight back up. Um, one of the things that surprises the psychiatrist and the psychologist that I've dealt with, as they would say to me, so what happened when you sought medical attention? And when I tell them I didn't, it surprises them. But my reaction is, well, if I wanted to die, why would I seek help? It wasn't a cry for help. I genuinely wanted to not be on this planet anymore. So why would I go and seek medical attention? I've attempted to take my life four times. Um, age 17, I took the 50 anodin. Age 23, I thought, well, if 50 doesn't do it, maybe 100 will. The next attempt was when I was around age 25. I tried to hang myself. But I used a belt that comes free when you buy a pair of jeans, and I thought they were leather, but they were actually only layered cardboard. Then the fourth time, I was living in Amsterdam and I tried slashing my wrists. And it was then that I finally thought, I need help here. I've got a problem. Now, at that age, I was 34 years old, so I'd had the depression for 21 years, and it literally took that long before I realized, this isn't normal. I need help. So what I'd done, I took myself to a hospital in Amsterdam. They had a psychiatrist down to me, talking to me. He asked me how I felt and then he said to me, I'd really like you to come into hospital if you agree to it. But I think as well there was a bit of it, if you don't agree, we are going to section you. I still kept it hidden from all my friends. Nobody knew. It was only when I moved back to Liverpool that a few years later I was having another depressive episode and I thought, I need help again. I didn't want to try another suicide attempt. I thought, I've got to get help. And luckily, I ended up in um, Broad Oak. And then through that, my parents finally got to find out. Broad Oak is the psychiatric hospital for um, Liverpool. So if you're based in South Liverpool, you will get sent to Broad Oak. If you're based in North Liverpool, you would get sent to Clockview. I couldn't accept or did at first that I did have a problem. It wasn't until the age of 34 that I finally realised this isn't normal. I do have a problem. And when I did finally seek help, I now look back and think, why didn't I seek help as soon as the depression started? Why did I keep it to myself? Because since I've engaged with services, since I've been taking medication, my life's a whole lot better. It's so much better my life now. And I just wish I'd have had the whereabouts and the courage to have let people know sooner. I, I, I'm currently under a psychiatrist who we get to see every few months who keeps a check on me. I've had a CPN. A CPN is a community psychiatric nurse. So when you get released from a psychiatric hospital, for a number of weeks, the CPN will decide on that when she, he or she decides it's time to let you be on your own for a while. So it could be anything from they come and visit you for six weeks every week or it could be up to a year or two years. It just depends when they feel it, you're ready to be back on your own. I would describe my recovery now by saying I am back in full-time work. I have a good social life. I've got plenty of friends and family who I see regularly. Um, I go out with my fellow peers. They're the ones who have done the recovery college courses with. So now at the moment, I'd say my recovery is good. I know in the future there may be blips, but 
I know now that when these blips come, I will be able to ask for help rather than attempting another suicide. But we need to get rid of the stigma around depression and suicide. I think what makes people not want to talk about it is the stigma. They'll, they'll be like myself, they'll be afraid of how relationships are going to change. Maybe the friends will drop them, you know, they don't want to be with them anymore. Or maybe the friends will be always worrying about them. One of the things with me, I didn't want my parents to be going around seven days a week wondering when am I going to attempt my next suicide? Because it wouldn't be fair on their lives to be constantly worrying about me. If I'd have been given more information, even, even if it was via a poster on a bus or a, a poster in the doctors, if I saw something that said, simply said something like, do you ever feel depressed? Do you have suicidal thoughts? Do you need to seek help? That would have got me thinking, hang on, that's me. Maybe I do need to seek help. Now I feel absolutely fantastic. I've been through the Mersey Care Recovery College. I've done courses on anxiety management, self-esteem, confidence building. I'm back into full-time work, albeit two part-time jobs. I'm a part-time peer support worker at Clockview Psychiatric Hospital. And for those who don't know, a peer support worker is somebody with mental health issues supporting other people with mental health issues. And it's really working out great because the patients appreciate the peer support, honestly. We're able to talk to them on their level. So if they say to me, I'm feeling depressed, I know what they're going through. And they appreciate the fact that I can say to them, look, I go through depression myself. I know exactly how you're feeling right now. So I've only got praise for the Recovery College because I think without them, there may have been another suicide attempt because after I got released from Broadoak, I was struggling to get back into work. So now life's great. I have a good social life. I have a good work life. I've got plenty of friends. I've got a loving family. And I've got hope for my future, which for me is one of the most important things. To anyone out there who is feeling suicidal, I promise you, you are not alone. I understand exactly how you're feeling. I understand the type of thoughts that are running through your head. But I promise you, there are people out there who are willing to help you. And I promise you, if you let them help you, you can get over this. You can stop the suicidal thoughts.